When a discovery is made, it usually provides an answer to a question. Making a new discovery generally means we now know more than we did before we made the discovery. That isn't always the case, though. There are occasions when discoveries actually leave us with more questions than answers. We like to call these mystery finds, and you're about to see a whole bunch of them in this video. Several centuries ago, perhaps as long as a thousand years, the ancient culture that lived in what's now Tanzania and Africa painted these three figures on the rocks of Swaga Game Reserve. They're too human-like to be animals, but they're too animal-like to be people. The anthropomorphic figures appear to have long slender bodies and heads like buffalo. No creature that looks like this has ever existed, or at least not any creature that we're aware of. So, what did these ancient people mean by their art? Might they be paintings of people wearing buffalo heads as some kind of ritual? That's always possible, but the modern-day Sandawe people are direct descendants of the people who made these paintings, and they have no cultural record of ceremonies that involved people transforming into buffalo. The cave paintings were found in 2018 and are among the country's oldest works of rock art, and yet we have no idea what they mean. Curiously, human figures often appear as trios in Tanzanian rock art, but the significance of the number three is also unknown. Many of our modern-day towns and cities are built on top of the ruins of settlements that came before them. Sometimes old buildings are used as the foundations of new ones. On other occasions, the buildings are demolished and the raw material is used to create something new. That was never the case for the Cucutini Tripilian culture of Romania. Their civilization emerged around 7,500 years ago and expanded to control most of what's now Romania, Moldova, and Ukraine, lasting for about 2,700 years. One of the biggest mysteries about the Cucutinu Tripilian civilization is where it vanished to, but they appear to have created that mystery on purpose. Within the past five years, Archaeologists have been able to prove that they deliberately burned their own settlements to the ground when they left them. It seems they had a schedule for this, with each settlement lasting between 60 and 80 years before being razed to the ground. This relentless cycle of destruction has made it hard to gather together the relics of their culture, essentially making them unknowable to modern-day archaeologists and historians. It's almost like they wanted to be forgotten. There's an 850-foot-long stone wall in Chatsworth, Georgia, USA. People like to call it the Fort Mountain Ancient Wall, but it's probably never served any defensive purpose. In fact, nobody really knows if it's ever served any purpose at all. The wall runs along the side of the mountain in a haphazard manner and has been there for as long as anybody remembers. Although many local archaeologists and historians have tried to get to the bottom of the mystery, nobody knows who made it or why. It was once thought that Hernando de Soto, the Spanish conquistador, built the wall as protection against the Cherokee Indians, but historians of the 20th century proved that de Soto never made it this far north. That raises the possibility that the Native Americans built it themselves, possibly as early as the 6th century, but they'd have no obvious reason to do so. As for the Cherokee themselves, their myths and legends say that the wall was built by a race of moon-eyed people. That might be a crude way of describing people who had rounder eyes than the ancient Cherokee, which is enough for a few people to claim that the wall was built by the Welsh explorer Maddock. But there's no evidence that Maddock ever existed. This might forever remain a mystery. In the summer of 2020, a stone carving was found washed ashore on a beach in British Columbia, Canada. Realizing that the 220-pound sculpture, which features human facial features, might be important, the man who discovered it contacted a museum in Victoria. Grant Keddy, one of the museum's senior archaeologists, was dispatched to retrieve the artifact and proclaimed it to be a ceremonial pillar created by the indigenous Lekwungen people. That proclamation has proven to be somewhat controversial. Local artist Ray Boudreau came forward almost immediately and said that the sculpture was actually his own work, and he'd carved it no later than 2017. 
Mr. Keddy subsequently deleted the post he'd made on the museum's website about the discovery and was accused of trying to cover his tracks after rushing to a conclusion. In fairness to him, though, the artifact is very much of the style of other stones cut and carved by the Lekwungen people, and there are some who wonder why Ray Baudreau would create such a sculpture when he has no Lekwungen heritage of his own. As for how it ended up in the sea in the first place, nobody's sure. Boudreau always assumed it had been stolen. The quarantine conditions of 2020 gave people the opportunity to get around to those little DIY tasks they'd been putting off for years. And some of those people made incredible discoveries when they did so. Jake Brown of Plymouth, England, was working in the basement of his home when he realized that the texture of one of the walls was different from the other three. He drilled a hole into it out of curiosity and peered through, finding out to his shock that the wall covered the entrance to an underground tunnel. After determining that it was safe to knock out a larger section of the wall, Jake climbed through and found a slew of artifacts, including a battered old bicycle and a newspaper printed in 1964. While it looks like the space may have been used as a dumping ground immediately prior to being sealed up more than 50 years ago, local historian Richard Fisher says that spaces like these were once used to grow mushrooms, or in some cases as grotto-like bathing areas. Jake isn't yet sure what he's going to do with the extra piece of real estate underneath his property, but he's definitely not going to seal it up again. Maybe an underground bathhouse isn't a bad idea. Turkey is a country full of spectacular ancient monuments. It is, after all, the home of Gobekli Tepe. While you might have heard of Gobekli Tepe, you're less likely to be aware of Kapilikaya, and that's a shame. This ancient rock tomb on a mountain is one of the country's most spectacular and mysterious sites. Situated 20 miles north of Korum and almost hidden by the rocky outcrops around it, it would be easy to miss the entrance to the tomb entirely if you didn't know it was there. Very little is known about its origins. The most popular theory is that it was built during the Hellenistic period approximately 2,200 years ago, but that's little more than an educated guess. It seems unlikely that the people of the time would have been able to carve a literal cube out of the solid mountain rock like whoever made Kapalakaya did. There's one solitary inscription at the site, which reads, Ikesios, which might indicate that this is the final resting place of an ancient military commander of the same name, as there are no human remains, nor any other form of archaeological evidence at the site we'll never be able to determine when the tomb was carved or why. The question of whether there is or was life on Mars has troubled some of the greatest scientific minds in the world, and also David Bowie, for centuries. We might finally be getting close to a definitive answer to that question. In 2018, NASA's Curiosity rover confirmed the discovery of ancient organic material on the Red Planet. To be more specific, it found methane. The methane has survived as organic molecules within sedimentary rock that are 3 billion years old. That supports an earlier finding that levels of methane in the Martian atmosphere appear to vary seasonally. The source of the molecules has not yet been identified. It's possible that they were generated by water rock chemistry, but it's just as possible that they had a biological origin. There's a concentration of methane within Gale Crater on the surface of the planet, and tests have already proven that Gale Crater was once full of water. If it was full of water, it might also have been full of life, and these tiny molecules might be the signature left behind by that life hundreds of millions of years ago. Here's another home DIY project that yielded strange results. In January 2021, a couple in Toronto, Canada named Abby and Anusha Narendran decided to upgrade the walls in their basement. They quickly discovered that there was mold trapped behind the walls, so they decided the best way forward would be to tear the drywall down completely and replace it. When they did, they found this drawing of a horse waiting for them. It's a well-realized sketch and might have been there since the house was built during the late 1950s. 
the Narendrans live in an area full of ravines, so the horse might even have belonged to the original owners. There's no other artwork on any of the other original walls below the home. This might have been a way of signing the property for the first owners, and if so, it appears to be the only signature they left behind. The couple recognized the artistic talent of whoever made the drawing, but that didn't stop them from immediately covering it over again with new drywall. Perhaps the next owners will rediscover it 20 or 30 years from now. We've at least been able to identify all of the discoveries we've seen in this video thus far. We have no idea what this next one is. It was found in the woods of Hampton, Maine, USA in April 2020 by a hiker named Tony Valcourt, who was out walking with his dog. Tony initially believed that the strange organic sack he found clinging to this tree was a bird's nest, but that doesn't seem to be the case. A bird's nest would have had a hole on at least one side. This has none. He then wondered whether it might be a nest of spiders or ticks, which prompted him to take these pictures and then get away quickly. Tony hoped that experts on the internet might be able to identify his strange find, but thus far, everybody's been stumped. The most popular theory is that it's a shell built around a game camera, but there's no sign of any wiring or a power supply to support that idea. We can't get away from the idea that it looks like an egg, but what manner of creature might hatch from an egg like this? The human brain is the least understood organ in the human body, and scientists are still only at the beginning of understanding the intricacies of how it works. The more they look, the more they find. In August 2018, they found a whole new type of brain cell. The discovery of the so-called rosehip neuron, best described as bundles of dendrites found in the top layer of the cortex, was found by an international team of researchers working together. The same neurons cannot be found in mice, leading the experts to believe they're uniquely human. The precise function of the cell is not yet known, but they appear to exist only in the uppermost layer of the neocortex, which is heavily involved in both hearing and sight. They also appear to have a break function, meaning they're able to restrict the activities of other neurons around them. Perhaps we shouldn't be surprised that science still isn't able to create an artificial replica of the human brain if we're this far into the 21st century and we still aren't entirely sure what the brain is actually composed of. In 2018, a team of archaeologists found a collection of stones in the deserts of Colorado, USA. The rounded nature of the stones clearly demonstrated that they'd been shaped by human hands and so the experts initially believed they'd found a set of primitive tools used for grinding up seeds and nuts during meal preparation. It seems that their purpose may not have been quite so ordinary. According to expert Marilyn Martorano, these are actually ancient lithophones. Translated from Greek, the word lithophone means musical rock, and that gives you a clue as to what the stones were probably used for. You can think of them as the ancient equivalent of a xylophone, created more than 5,000 years ago. The reason the archaeologists didn't recognize them immediately is that while lithophones have been found all over the world, from Vietnam to France, no examples of them have ever previously been identified in Colorado. Discoveries like these remind us that making music is one of the very oldest human hobbies, and humans have been pursuing that hobby since long before anyone figured out how to make a piano or a guitar. While a lake losing its water generally isn't a good thing, it does allow you to see what's at the bottom of the lake, probably for the first time in several hundred years. That's what happened with Lake Iznik in Turkey, which plunged to record lows due to a drought in mid-2020, and in the process, revealed the remains of a 1,500-year-old basilica. The ruins were first identified via aerial photography as the waters began to recede, but before long, they were visible to the naked eye while standing on the shoreline. The circumstances of the basilica's drowning are mysterious, as is the question of who built it in the first place. One possibility 
is that it fell below the waterline after an earthquake reshaped the terrain in or around the year 740 and might have been built by early Christians. The shape and style of the building bear a few similarities to the Hagia Sophia, a temple built not far from here during the 5th century. That wouldn't explain why the seals of an ancient order of Scottish knights have been found within the ruins of the temple, though. In fact, that's something nobody can explain at all. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.